Welcome to this art vlog about art block. I had just finished a lot of client work as well as several illustrations for my portfolio and I was feeling pretty burnt out and unsure what to do next. So I'll be taking you on a little journey of finding new inspiration, trying new media and how I wrap up art projects so I have a clean slate and can dive into new ideas. Hi, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time if you're new. I'm Evelyn, I'm a Swiss artist living here in South Korea, where it was incredibly dark, cloudy and rainy for the last few months. Towards the end of February, beginning of March, that started to really hit me and I encountered a little bit of maybe a little bit of art block. Over the years I've learned to kind of spot the signs early and counteract them. I kind of know what works for me and I'll show you around Jeju Island a little bit as I recharge with a sketchbook. To be completely honest, the first and most important advice for recharging and finding new inspiration is just very simply rest. Both physical rest and doing something that's not drawing or painting for the sake of my hands and wrists and mental or emotional rest. Our minds, or at least my mind, need quiet to reset. And I had to learn the hard way that sometimes the answer is to just put the pencil away for at least a day. When the rainy winter days finally went on a short break, a trip to Jeju City came up. A favorite step for finding new inspiration and energy can be the local art shop. Here I'm at Sabi in jeju -shi. A chaotic little shop packed with art supplies from both Korean and international brands, handmade stretched canvas and endless possibilities. Changing it up can feel great when you're close to art block. If your usual sketchbook is small and delicate, bring out an A3 paper and charcoal. If you've been working on large pieces, scale down and focus on simplicity, like I did here. I found this tiny sketch pad at the art shop and have been bringing it with me whenever I leave the house since. The small format forces me to be quick and simple instead of perfectionist and I'm using pens instead of my usual pencils or brushes. You could go even further and try a completely different medium, like clay sculpting, which I will be doing later, and it really is just a way to get out of a creative rut I am trapped in. I found that reading books or watching movies can inspire me even if they have nothing to do with my art style or settings. For example, we went to watch Dune Part 2 when it came out, and while none of my art right now has a science fiction or desert setting, the sheer passion and creative direction that went into the movie filled me with a sense of excitement. The passion and creativity of others can be infectious. And that brings me to another tip I like to do for inspiration. Chatting with other artists. If you have creative friends, no matter if they paint or sculpt or crochet, have a little meetup and talk about your projects or new ideas. And in this specific case, visiting a friend with lots of art supplies is a special treat. She gave me the idea of making my own travel palette for watercolors with magnets and replaceable pens, and I even got to borrow some of her gouache paints to try out, which I'd been eyeing for a while. I'll travel to Seoul next week and really want to sketch while I'm there, so a portable palette was exactly what I needed. And because of the mentioned art block and near burnout, I suddenly had the urge to make my own watercolor pens instead of buying plastic ones. The air dry clay is left over from a fun afternoon months ago sculpting trinkets with a friend and while I'm a noob when it comes to this, I truly enjoyed the process and my lumpy potato shaped little watercolor pens. To protect the air dry clay when using these with water later on, I added multiple varnish layers. With the beautiful side effect of turning them all into these shiny little trinkets. The 
magnets didn't stick perfectly to the more uneven shapes, so glue had to come to the rescue. And as you can see, I kept some of the pans empty. I'll visit a large art supply store in Seoul and hopefully buy some gouache paints of my own there to complete this palette. At the moment it's a mixture of watercolor paints and the few gouache shades that I had at hand. It's amazing how quickly I can build up that energy to paint again if I just give myself maybe one afternoon, maybe one Sunday, not doing anything related to it. And I'm not sure if the whole like draw every day and draw for 10 hours a day type of advice is still as popular as it was when I kind of first got started when that was the overwhelming opinion. I hope that's not the case and I hope that if you're doing that, um, that you have a good sense for when to give yourself a break. On a day off, a visit to a museum was also very inspiring. Here I am at the Jeju National Museum. These museum visits don't have to be about art, but anything that interests you or expands your knowledge can be inspiring, no matter if history, botany, sculptures. I took a moment to test out my new miniature sketchbook again with quick tiny drawings of traditional instruments and then also found these stone sculptures, which you can also find in other locations around the island, very inspiring, as I've always loved the local myths and folklore. The museum visit reminded me of a series of ink and watercolor illustrations I'd made during Inktober many years ago. I still have a few of the art scenes that I printed back then, and I took a moment to look back at the mythology and history inspired art I'd made back then. This phase of reflection can be as simple as looking at your most recent finished artworks and seeing what worked for you, what you loved painting, what you struggled with and what you'd like to pursue more. But it can also go further back, looking at old sketches and ideas that are forgotten somewhere in a sketchbook or notebook, but that might still resonate now. It came as a bit of a shock to realize that it had been more than five years since I last printed or even just finished an entire series of illustrations just for myself. So another goal this year is to create a more cohesive body of work that can be turned into small art books or scenes. I'm already working on a series surrounding the novel Dracula, but again, something featuring Jeju Island landscapes, botanicals and local culture, all combined with maybe a fantasy twist, feels very exciting too. So I started to sketch some ideas for that book layout as well. Series of paintings or drawings would also force me to keep the art style cohesive, to explore a subject in more detail than a single painting would allow. And if I find a theme that really interests me, I'll have enough material to paint for the entire year since I'm so slow. After finishing several illustrations over the last few months, I went into a weird transition phase. Usually I always have paintings in different stages the sketching stage, the drawing stage, the coloring stage, waiting for me to sit down and work on. 
But here I was standing in front of an empty desk and an empty easel, with no idea what project to pursue next. So I gave myself a moment to reflect and also to celebrate all the paintings I'd finished. Varnishing paintings can be one step that feels like a celebration to me. If you're a watercolor or pencil artist, finding a beautiful frame for your latest piece might give you that same feeling of closure. If you paint digitally, making sure that everything is saved and backed up and updated in your online portfolio or wherever you present your art can also be a way to tie up a project. Do you have any rituals you like to do after finishing a painting? Do you just put them away somewhere and forget about them? I really never know what to do with my original pieces, especially the ones that are just for myself and not really for sale or for a client. To kind of mirror the varnishing and framing phase, there's also this phase of looking forward and getting ready for all the upcoming work. Preparing canvas with extra gesso layers or stretching watercolor paper or even just using sandpaper on panels that are a bit wonky gives me a weird meditative energy and comes with the nice side effect that when I finally am ready to sit down and paint, all my supplies are ready to go. In my DIY phase that week, I also restored an old drawing board that was falling apart and gave it a fresh paint layer to finish, since I prefer my drawing backgrounds to be white or neutral color. Cleaning up my desk after a project is over also makes me feel prepared and excited for the next one, and keeps the chaos at bay. At this point, I felt like myself again and had more and more concrete ideas I wanted to pursue next. Like I'd mentioned, I want my art this year to connect more with local culture and history, instead of only focusing on clients from abroad or the mythology and fantasy I grew up with. So I'd love to paint figures from Korean folklore. Here I'm sketching some ideas for illustrations showing Ungnyo, the bear that transformed into a woman, and Padi Gongju, the thrown away princess that conquers death. There are so many different versions of these tales, so while I'm sketching some first ideas, there's a lot more research I want to do before fully committing to these. The reason I usually don't encounter art block is that I always have something ready to work on, no matter if for clients or myself. And it's important that all these pieces that I'm working on are all at different stages. One or maybe two might be in the sketch and research phase. This is what I'm doing right here for this Unio piece. This is the phase in which I explore compositions and concepts, I do research, collect reference materials, which can take entire evenings, shoot my own reference images, and then prepare all of that for the actual painting. 
At least one painting is usually in the drawing stage. This is a step that needs my full focus. There are artists out there that, with lots of practice and experience and a vast visual library in their memory, can probably do this stage much more intuitively. But for me, it's still a struggle to get anatomy, lighting, expressions, clothing folds, and so on and so on, even remotely onto the paper. So this is a step I'd do on a weekend day or when I have a few hours completely undisturbed to just focus on drawing. And then one or two paintings might be in the actual painting stage. Once all the preparations and references and sketches are done, this is when I can just go with the flow and paint. Maybe late at night, during the early stages, and then on a bright afternoon to make sure the colors look how I want them, in natural light, for the later layers. Having these multiple work-in-progress pieces makes sure that no matter if I have a random 30 minutes to look through reference pictures, or an entire morning to draw, or a late evening during which I just want to listen to music and paint, there's always something waiting for me. I found that this helps me so much with decision paralysis and my ADHD brain loves knowing that at least for one painting, past me has already done the concentration part. I think a big reason I struggled with art blog earlier this month was that I had nothing at this stage. All my client work was finished, nothing was ready to just go, and I really want to be careful to keep a better rhythm going for the rest of the year. This was a bit of a different video, not so much focused on the actual drawings, but more behind the scenes and sharing some of my creative process. I'd love to hear your thoughts, if this is something you'd like to see more of, maybe from Seoul and with travel sketches, or maybe as I pursue some of these personal paintings that I've been planning here. But thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate any kind of liking and subscribing and the usual YouTube things and wanted to thank you all for the amazing and kind responses to the previous sketchbook video as well. I'm feeling much more energized for the rest of the year, hopefully, and can't wait to dive into more art and hopefully also share it with all of you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next art video.